So today we're gonna to do something very exciting because we're gonna start talking about databases and how to handle data inside a website because when you start doing that, that's the moment where you really start to make a website more dynamic rather than making a static website, which is something that basically means that you have a website that doesn't really change depending on which user is watching the website. So when you have a dynamic website, all of a sudden you can start changing content or if you were to hand off a website to a client, they can start changing content themselves if you want them to be able to do that. That is actually something that I don't think a lot of people realize that when you start learning how to make websites and you want to become a web developer and you think to yourself, okay, so I'm gonna start making websites for people, but when you hand over a website, and they have to make a change to let's say a title or paragraph, or maybe they want a image updated or something, then all of a sudden they have to contact you because you can't give them a website and then teach them HTML and CSS so they can change things themselves. Um, so that doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? So you have to be able to make a website that is dynamic, we can allow people to change content themselves without having to know HTML or CSS in order to do so. For example, if you want to create a blog inside a website and you want the client to be able to you know, upload a new blog post by themselves without having to contact you every single time, that is going to be an example of something we can start doing when it comes to learning PHP together with a database. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about how to set up a database and what exactly it is. Databases sound so dry when you say it out loud like that. <laughs> uh, it's not, it's quite fun once you get into it. And when you really start seeing content change, it it's, gets a lot of fun, okay? So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that when you go inside your XAMPP that we installed in the second episode, I do believe that you do have both the Apache and the MySQL server running because the first server here, which is the Apache server, is going to be the web server where we have PHP running. The second one is going to be the actual database server. So this one has to be running in order for us to access our database with the XAMPP that we installed uh, because you do have a database installed as well other than just PHP and a server. So this is something that you do have already. Uh, we don't have to do anything special in order to set up a database. We just have to open it basically. Just a small quick tip for you, because I don't think I mentioned this in the first episode where we installed XAMPP. Uh, you can actually go inside the config menu here and you can actually make it so that the software auto starts these servers when you open up the program. So you can just tick these off right here and then you can click save. Now, if it gives you a error message, it is because you need to run this uh, software here as administrator. So the basic way to do that would be to go inside your XAMPP installation, go down, find your XAMPP uh, dash control, right click, properties, and then basically just go in here inside the compatibility and set this one to run this program as administrator. If you do that, then it's going to allow for you to, to set these up as auto start uh, without giving an error message. So with that done, let's go ahead and talk a bit about something called a relational database management system, RDBMS for short. You don't have to memorize that, it's just so you know, okay? So we have many different types of database systems out there, which is what we call a RDBMS. Um, and the one we're using is the one called MySQL, which is also the most popularly used one when it comes to databases with websites, especially if you're using PHP. But there are many different types of database systems out there. And that, you know, some people watching these tutorials may be using something else, but if you installed XAMPP, you will be using MySQL for this tutorial here. Most of the time, if you do actually have an online server from a hosting company, you will also be using MySQL, just to mention it. So it is the most commonly used one, which is also why we're gonna be using that one for these lessons here. And just to debunk something here, because I know I will get some comments asking about this because it is something I've seen on previous videos, MySQL servers, are not the same thing as MySQL PHP functions, okay? So before people start typing in comments that MySQL is outdated and it's unsafe to use, then it's not the same thing as PHP MySQL functions, okay? It's two completely separate things. So we don't need to worry about using a MySQL database, okay? That is something that is very commonly used and it's not unsafe. Uh, in any sort of way. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open up my uh, browser and inside my browser, I can go up and type localhost, just like we do when we actually wanna enter a website, but instead of saying forward slash the name of the website, in this case, I'm gonna write php my 
admin. And if I type that and click enter, you'll see that we enter our database system. So PHP My Admin is going to be the dashboard that you're going to use in order to manage your database. And you can actually see that we have many different types of databases on the side here. Uh, you're not gonna worry about these ones that you have over here. You may not have PHP tutorial because I actually created that myself at some point. But don't worry about these databases that we have over here. You just need to know that any database you create will be over here on the side. So what you can see is we do actually have quite a few tabs up here. Uh, you don't need to start freaking out about, oh no, there's so many things going on in here um, because we're not gonna be using all these tabs up here. Do also keep in mind that you do actually see some information about your web server. So you can actually see what PHP version you're using. So right now I'm actually using 8.2.0. Um, so this is actually some information about your server. The first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to create a database for our tutorials here. So what I'll do is I'll go up to databases in the top here. And then you can see we can type in the name of a database. So we can just come up with any sort of name, of course, a name that makes sense. As you can see with these databases down here, there is kind of like a naming convention. So don't use weird symbols or something like that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and say my first database, just so we have something, right? Then you can just go ahead and click create. And then you can see we have a database added to the side over here. Now, as a default, it is actually going to be selected once you create it the first time, but you can also see we can swap between them and actually see some of the uh, other databases that we have here. So we can actually click back and forward. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and select the one we just created called My First Database. Now, inside of here, you can see this is quite empty. Like there's nothing going on in here because we just created a completely empty and fresh database. And what you can do in here is a couple of things. First of all, you can import database data from somewhere else if you have a existing database that you want to import in here or we can just go ahead and create a database from scratch we will be doing the latter because we will be creating things ourselves and there is a couple of ways we can go around doing that uh, i do want to point out to you that right now it says no tables found in database the first thing you need to know about a database is that we have data inside a database so for example let's say i have a login system inside my website and in order to have that we need to have users signing up inside our website and with that logic we do also need to be able to save that user information somewhere for example the username the password they used maybe an email address maybe what date they signed up inside the website we can save all kinds of information about our user. And that is what we use a database for because whenever the website has to remember something inside our website, we use a database to save that information about whatever we want to save inside our website. And in order to make that a little bit easier, we create something called tables because instead of just taking all our data and putting them inside our database, there has to be some sort of structure going on. So we want to maybe create a table that is called users where we have all the user information. We might also have a table called comments. So we have all the different comments a user made inside our website, inside that table. So basically a table is a place where we gather similar information about something inside our website. And we do have two ways we can create that. Either we can go down here and do this in the confusing way at least i think this is the confusing way this is also the way that i see most people do this when they start out making a database uh, but you can go down here where it says create new table and you can actually type in a name so in this case i can just say uh, users because we use that as an example and then i'm going to say how many columns do i want uh, which basically means how many different pieces of information about this user do i want to save so in this case i could say five which is an id username password the date they signed up, an email address, you know, so we have some, some information about them. And if I were to click create here, you can see we get this very confusing uh, table <laughs> that we can start filling out. Uh, so basically these are going to be the names. So like I said, we can have an ID, we can have a username, we can also have a password, you know, we can start filling in the names for all these different columns, what is what they're called inside our database. Uh, but the problem here is that there's a lot of information that you don't really need right now to know about. Uh, so this is only going to confuse people even more. Uh, so what we'll do instead is I want to go back. So we can go back inside where it says structure and then you can see, oh, you have unsaved changes. Are you sure you want to leave? Um, yeah, let's, let's not worry about this right now. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna go ahead and create all our data using SQL code. 
So we're gonna do everything manually, which is also gonna be very useful because once you start talking about how to uh, change our database and, and talk together with the database using PHP from our website directly, uh, you will need to know SQL code in order to do that. So there's no better place to practice SQL than directly inside a database. So, hey, let's do that instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here in the top where you can see we have something called SQL. Do make sure that your database is selected. Otherwise, this is not going to be SQL code that you write for that particular database because I sometimes see people who have another database selected or no database selected. So make sure that your new database is selected and then click SQL. Now, SQL code is actually quite simple to write. A lot of people find it a little bit intimidating to start with, but it's it's actually quite simple. And, and of all the SQL that you may look up and, and try to learn, uh, there is typical SQL, you know, like very few lines of code that we use over and over and over and over again. So it's not like you have to learn a lot of code, just like if you had to learn PHP, for example. It's, it's quite simple and there's not a lot of code you have to learn for now. But this is the tab that we're going to be using in the next video when we actually start learning how to create a table together. So we're gonna take this video by video. We're just gonna do one step at a time uh, chronologically as we're making this database. Uh, really what we have to do here is just create a table and that's pretty much it for now. But although we could take this table we create in the next video and use it directly inside our website, I do want to use this particular SQL uh, editor here to just kind of show you how to do various things using SQL uh, because you're gonna be using the exact same SQL inside your PHP code. So the best place to practice it is doing it inside this database here. I do also want to point out that even though we are going to have a couple of lessons here where we're not really going to write any PHP code and this is a PHP course, this is the other side of the coin when it comes to learning PHP. So if you don't know this stuff here, then you're missing out on half of what PHP can actually do in order to make your website really cool. So learning about databases and learning PHP with it is something that is necessary when you're learning PHP for the first time. So this is going to be a couple of lessons of just SQL programming, essentially, uh, but it's gonna be very worthwhile to, to learn. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you guys in the next video.